I want to welcome Agile XRM to the podcast. I've known the people at Agile XRM for the past 12 years. I've seen how their business process management tool can add massive value to complex organizational processes in sectors such as finance and government. If you have complex processes or a need for dialogues on the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, take a look at how this BPM tool can add value. You can find them at agilexrm.com or check out the show notes for more details. Welcome to the MVP Show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is all the way from London in the United Kingdom. He works as a solution designer at D365 Consulting. He's awarded his MVP in 2021, so that's totally awesome. He's the founder of the Power Platform Africa community. You can find his blog at uh, uk. Welcome to the show, Alexo. Hi, Mark. Uh, thanks for having me. Did I pronounce everything right then? That was awesome. That was perfect. <laughs> wow. Wow. That surprises me. Um, tell me a bit of it. Tell, tell me a bit about your world. Tell me a bit about London, your family, uh, the best places to eat in London, that type of thing. Uh, everything that kind of doesn't involve work. Yeah. So I've got a free young children, uh, two girls and one boy and I have a wife, um, uh, who's also learning a power platform. Uh, so I'm a very huge, um, football fan. I do follow Arsenal as a team, not the best one, but uh, they're doing well. <laughs> in terms of uh, eating places, uh, there's quite a few places in London, but um, for me, I'm a big fan of Caribbean food. So I tend to go places in East London, Stratford. Uh, my favorite dish is uh, oxtail and rice and peas. So yeah, so I do, I can do it with eating it almost every other day. So. <laughs> That's how much I like it. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> I've tried to make it uh, myself. I'm uh, looking at uh, online recipes. Uh, so far, I haven't managed to get it right. I'm still learning it. <laughs> what, what, you, you know, Caribbean food, what, el- what else kind of fits into that category? What are the other kind of main dishes there? There's a curry goat. There's a ake. There's fish. Uh, there is... Um, what else is that? For me, mainly it's oxtail. There's jack chicken as well. But um, everything else, I tend to ignore it. For me, just the oxtail, which does the trick. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you know what you like, right? It's it's good to stick with it. It's good to stick with it. Tell me about your journey into technology. How did you get into tech? Yeah, so myself, uh, I don't come from um, a university background or a tech background. So... Originally from um, Zimbabwe, and in most uh, our upbringing, we are we are encouraged to be a doctor, to be a pilot. Uh, those are some of the things you're encouraged to do, right? So moved to London back in 2001, and um, yeah, was never bothered about tech. Then went to college. So when I went to college, for some reason or another, I got uh, put into an IT class. <laughs> So at that point, um, the the whole thing about a computer didn't actually resonate uh, with myself, and it took some time to actually convince somebody at home to say, "Can you purchase me one?" But uh, what then happened at that point is uh, the lecturer at uh, the college went to a computer fair and actually bought me one and said, "There you go, help yourself." <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so he said, oh, yeah, help yourself. If you need any help, let me know, right? So, yeah, played around with the computer, opened up uh, the box, looking at the motherboard just to see what's inside the box. Then put it on the side and just say, no, no, there's no point. Let me just carry on, right? So, yeah, as years gone by, I had a reflection again. I was like, I need to get into tech, but I don't know where to go. So I went on Facebook 
and randomly just started searching for people who work in tech. So Dynamics 365, SharePoint, uh, Google Cloud, AWS, you name it. But um, what was amazing for me is I came across two senior people, uh, one of them based in the United States, one of them based in Austria, and uh, they offered to give me a hand and say, look, I'm going to tell you and help you to get what you want to get to. So they started sharing material, guiding me to the community pages where I can learn more and more. So that gave me the drive to push on as much as I can. And uh, in the first instance, of course, I wasn't looking at uh, the difficult stuff, which I need to understand. I was just looking at the front end. And I'm thinking, okay, great. I understand the front end. This is good. But um, these two people I came across, um, I have to give them credit because they were very honest with me and said, look, what you are thinking you're doing well here, you need to put a bit more. So even to your point where I started going for job interviews, uh, one of uh, the colleagues uh, in Austria said to me, I want you to be honest when you go out. Just tell the employer that you don't have any experience. Uh, you are a new starter. Uh, this is what you've been doing in terms of self-learning. And uh, at the same time, in that process, uh, I started kind of doing reflection. When I first went for my interview, um, completely spoke out, say, rubbish, I have to say. But uh, what I managed to do from that context when I was doing the feedback uh, I was saying things I think didn't go too well. And I was then asking questions, how can I improve those areas? So I kind of got the support from there. Then from there onwards, I uh, started uh, connecting uh, with the community, going to user groups, uh, meeting up uh, with our colleagues on LinkedIn. And uh, from that uh, interactions, uh, at some point we came across before you came to London, and then we eventually met the user group in person, which was awesome. So those interactions for me with the community and also having the drive to push on as much as I can uh, has always been helpful for me from the point I started in terms of still making progress uh, as I go up to now. This is so good. This is such a, you know, it's a, like a blueprint for anybody really that wants to get into tech uh, you know, I, I love it that you had mentors along the way, people that helped you. Um, such a great, great, great story. So, so you know, you're obviously now in Microsoft Business Applications. Um, I assume so because you're a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. So how how did that journey really start of, of you, you kind of like zeroing in on this area of technology? Yeah, so in terms of uh, the area of technology itself, uh, I started looking at it and say, okay, this is what I need to specialize in. So my main focus became uh, CE, Dynamics 365 CE. And uh, from then onwards, what I then realized is uh, I had people around me uh, in terms of relatives and friends. They started asking me questions. How did you manage to do it? Uh, because we don't think it's achievable. So basically, in terms of that, I started kind of introducing them uh, to what uh, the technology is all about, what is involved, what's required. So started with uh, a WhatsApp group, and there were three of us in there, and uh, we're just uh, interacting. And then after those interactions, two of them dropped out. Uh, it's not really as fun as I thought. Then I was left with just one person in a group, <laughs> which means I could just stick to the one-to-one, -one, right? So started speaking, having the interactions, and that one person who stayed behind then started spreading the word to others. So after spreading the word to others, um, I thought to myself, let me set up a community uh, and bring more people together. And apart from bringing people who want to learn together, engage uh, with the community. So I started uh, looking at what people are actually looking to do. So the first instance I started doing at this point was to introduce the technology so they understand what business applications is in terms of our CE and also in terms of Power Platform. So in that journey, uh, some of them started coming in, uh, pushing as much as they can. And uh, they started coming to me and I was saying, oh, look, this is what cool, something cool I found. So what was important uh, in terms of having uh, learners within this uh, platform was that it was an opportunity for me to understand which angle they are coming from and where they need to go to. 
So all of a sudden, it just grew. So all of a sudden, at this point, we now have 180 people in the WhatsApp group. <laughs> so it became really unmanageable because I was just by myself at that point. So I then reached out to the community and asked uh, for people who are happy to take on a mentoring uh, role and also for those who are happy to come and share their expertise uh, with them as well. And um, for me, what was important, apart from helping people to learn the tech, was uh, the community, uh, how much people just raised their hand up and say, yes, I'm happy to come and help out. What would you like me to do? So in terms of uh, that, um, we then started seeing the progress of people, people coming in, uh, learning stuff, and then people coming back to me and say, Alex, you, you know what? I think I'm ready to go for the next step. So at this point, I'm not saying to them, go and apply for a job. So I'm asking, you are ready for the next step. What is that next step you think yourself? So that way, I'm kind of opening up the conversation to actually understand what they want to do. So at that point, oh, I want to go and look for a role and see if I can get an entry role. So the most important thing here for me was to emphasize uh, the importance of being honest, uh, to say, okay, this is where I am. I'm a new starter. And then what then took place from there, the first person who went, they went for a first interview. Uh, it didn't go down too well uh, because they didn't expect the environment. So they went for the second one and they got the role. So once they got the role, uh, they then became a springboard for the rest of uh, the learners. So everyone is now saying, okay, can you tell us a bit more how you've done it? They're now asking one of their fellow learners how they've done it. So in that process, what it then helped me with as well is to empower that person to also help their colleagues. So people are not just saying, okay, let's go to Alex. So they're now going to that person. So in that whole process, uh, the collaboration with the community carried on. So then connected with the Power Platform School, uh, which is in London and the US, to kind of get some of the learners some structured learning. So from that process, we started seeing um, some progressive results where people have gone into work and they're coming back wanting to help others. So it just showed the importance of having the community coming in to help and also empowering those learners to be able to help others as well. This is so good. This is so good. It's 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 phenomenal, right? The the scale of what is growing, you know. You know when you when you set your vision there to go for it. Yep, uh, it's incredible. Um, and at the same time, um, I have to put my hand up myself. Um, the whole idea of the community side of things was great, but I wasn't confident in going to use the groups and uh, speak, uh, deliver sessions on what I know and what I my passion is so i just been sitting there i'm posting what i'm doing in the community but uh, i'm really scared to go and speak right so one of the things which happened is uh one of um the colleagues in the u.s i'm unfortunately i'm sorry i'm gonna have to name them they've done an amazing job so that was mary thompson so mary thompson reached out to me and said oh i, I like what you're doing have you ever thought of speaking in user groups and at that point i'm thinking uh, why are you trying to put me? That's a bit daunting. <laughs> so again, it's showing how important the community is at that point. So we scheduled a call and uh, we started speaking about what's needed in terms of uh, being able to stand up in front of people or engaging with other people to sharing your knowledge. So at one point, uh, there was a request for table talks, uh, which was the first one at uh, Ignite. And she says to me, there is a link. Can you apply? And at that point, I'm thinking, there's no way I will get an opportunity for Ignite. So came up with the topic, and um, I shared the topic with uh, with her. So this is the topic I have. This is what I want to speak about. And um, I got an email confirming that I have been accepted. So, <laughs> so at that point, um, the nerves started going away. Because there was that support as well from my own part where I'm being supported, where I'm getting some guidance on what I need to do. So from there onwards, um, I was aligned with other community members um, to do that table talk. And uh, again, what kind of stood out for me is how engaging and how supportive uh, those colleagues were. 
Um, they didn't, because when I remember very well, I think we had about three MVPs on the table talk. And uh, at that point, they did not say, okay, yeah, Alex is not an MVP. They just were welcoming. They were happy to have discussions. Uh, they were happy to engage. So for me, it also kind of boosted that confidence. You say, you know what? Let me push on. Let me give it a go and let's see how it goes. Wow. This is so good. Such a great jury. I love your enthusiasm uh, coming through in your voice. It, 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 it's, it's awesome. So, so you obviously became an MVP then. How did, how did that happen? So I started uh, pushing on and uh, in, what, what then happened after Ignite, uh, I had that confidence now to, to then uh, submit sessions to user groups. And then um, I had uh, Trisha Sinclair uh, in London reaching out and say, oh, I can see you're submitting sessions. Would you like any help? So she didn't come to me and say, okay, uh, I'm going to mentor you. She just said, would you like any help? Uh, I also had Mark Christie. Uh, there are several people in the community who reached out asking if I need any help and support. And also I was getting compliments uh, from the table talk. So from then onwards, I um, started getting a lot of support from the community uh, and in most cases, in some of the things I was doing uh, for the Power Platform Africa community. Uh, so Power Platform Africa community, as much as it says Africa, it's just a name, but uh, it's, it is a global uh, user group which just allows anyone everywhere who is interested in learning the tech to embark on the journey. So started doing a lot of um, uh, webinars, uh, a lot of uh, mentoring, um, so the key thing for me, uh, which I also learned on this journey, it wasn't a matter of uh, speaking to someone and say, this is what the tech is, off you go, get on with it. Uh, what was important for me was to make sure even when the person is ready for a role, to carry on supporting them because it's a first experience for them. It's not going to be as easy. So just uh, having a check-in and giving them the opportunity so what I did, uh, I opened up my calendar so everyone in the group had access to my calendar three times a week, where they'll book some time, they'll discuss with me the challenges they have uh, one-to-one without uh, anyone else around, uh, and see what's the best way to approach those. Um, in some cases, they had questions I did not know how to answer. So <laughs> it was a matter of me being honest and say, look, the question of asked me, I'm not too sure. Let me ask somebody else. So... In that process, connecting with the community again and uh, seeing who has that expertise to answer that question and to explain it as much as possible so someone can learn uh, from it. This is so good. Such a such a good story. And, and, and obviously, it's been a great experience. You enjoy what you do. The, the final question I have for you is around recommendations that you, you, would, you would have for uh, people wanting to become an MVP. So for me, for someone who wants to be an MVP, I would say the approach is not to do something to become an MVP. Uh, whether you become an MVP or not, I would say enjoy what you do for the community. Uh, if you are doing mentoring, if you are doing blogs, uh, if you're doing uh, vlogs, uh, just carry on uh, pushing, sharing your knowledge, sharing your expertise. So the goal should never be to say, I'm doing this to be an MVP. Uh, from my own personal experience, uh, I think it's very, very important to do it because you love what you do. So if you decide I'm going to be blogging, have fun, enjoy it. If you decide you're going to mentor people, be excited about it. Uh, be there to help people get where they want to get to. If you decide you want to do a how-to videos, awesome stuff. Um, do those things. Uh, the most important thing here, uh, the MVP award, it's an amazing, it's the best thing for me to ever happen to me. But uh, the key thing is to have that enjoyment uh, of what you're doing. That is the other thing which will also help communities. Because you don't want to say, I'm doing it for the MVP, then you get the award, then all of a sudden you're not enjoying what you're doing because you think you've got where you want to get to. So my advice is just keep pushing on what you enjoy, keep pushing on what you're doing and rejoice in seeing the community getting stronger and getting people to learn from you as well. Alexo, thank you so much for coming on the show. 
Thank you for having me, Mark. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 guy. Thanks again and see you next time.